good kick right in front of the goal, and it's in. Well, good afternoon, everybody. This is Mike McKeg at Peters Township AHN Arena on a Saturday afternoon for the Peters Township Indians against the Laurel Highland Mustangs. All the pregame festivities are over and we are ready for some basketball. Peters Township coming in with a 1-0 record along with the Laurel Highland Mustangs 1-0 uh, after opening, opening night for both teams in this, uh, in this tournament. We'll have Aaron Blua tipping off against Keandre DeShields. And the ball is up. Controlled by the Mustangs. Indians again in their man-to-man. -man. Mustangs running their motion offense. Long three up, just off the front rim by Rodney Gallagher. Cody for three, off the front end as well. Mustangs push. And a little bit of a uh, move before you catch. The Indians are gonna have their hands full in this, uh, in this one, a lot more than uh, the Albert Gallatin game last night. So the Mustangs set up in a 2-2-1 trapping press. Pat McDonald gets it across court. Cody drives in and lays it off the board and catches the foul. Good hard move to his right. Lays it off the backboard with his left and he'll get a chance to put the Indians up by three. Try to foul is on number three, 33, Nico Johns. And Cody gets the roll. Indians back to their half court man to man. Gallagher over to DeShields. Mustangs patient this time down the court. Looking to reset their offense. Step to the side and that was a nice move. Ties the game at three. 2-2-1 two, two, pressure again. Bre Peters breaks the press. Brula comes in and takes a nice, makes a nice floating layup. Mustang player tried to take the charge but was not in position. Indians come away with the ball. Pat McDonald cross half court. Indians 5-3 in the early going. Brula over Costco, near steal. Mustangs. It's a fairly physical game so far. Looked like they're letting them play with a little bit of a push off there in the back as they went for that loose ball. The Indians keep moving. And there's an up and down. That would have been a really great move if it was allowed in the, in the rule book. And this Indian student section, which that happened right in front of, concurs. Indians down to Cody. Again, a nice drive. Indians up 7-3 with Cody having five of the seven. That's a good sign for the Indians because last night Cody did not open up the scoring. He was shut out in the first half, but ended up uh, later in the game. He ended up with uh, 14 though. And right just like that, the Indian, or the Mustangs answer with another three point making it 7-6. Cody for three. Just off the back rim. Mustangs up, up with it. Oh, and they're gonna get Pat McDonald and a hustle foul. So 
So that last three was uh, Brandon Davis. It's one of their three all-section returning players. Gallagher out in the front court, dogged by McCullough. Not, not exactly sure what that was. But up come the Indians, cross half court to Cody. Here comes Cody into the middle. Tipped, Indians. Four forty four left in the first quarter. Uh, it's a trip, and there's a nice, easy lay in for the uh, for the Indians. Costco dribbles into the teeth of it, loses it. And there's a slam on the turnover. And Laurel Highlands takes a 10-7 lead. Brula bounce pass to Cody. He lays it in, 10-9. Halfway through the second, first quarter. Step back, two, oh. Followed him after the shot, that's uh, Brandon Davis that'll go to the line. And that was a three point shot, so he'll get three shots. First one, he gets the roll, 11-9. Set to check in for the Indians, Ziegler and Dunbar. For McCosco and McDonald. Three of three for Davis. That gives Davis eight points so far. Mustangs trapping, pulls up, but just didn't get the bank to fall. Here come the Mustangs. Pull up jump shot, and that goes out of bounds. Indians. Mustang sticking with that 2-2-1. Two, two, Indians break it, fight through the double team. Oh, nice cut down the middle, but they just couldn't get it, and we have a jump ball. Ball stays with the Indians. Evan Puel into the lineup for Aaron Brula. Mustangs drop into their man-to-man. -man. McCullough into the lane. And he's called for a charge. Nice defensive play by Brandon Davis. He's the man for the Mustangs so far. That's McCullough's first. Three fouls on the Indians, one for the Mustangs. Gallagher scoops in. Misses the rim, but stays active and gets gets it back to the uh, one of his co work or co teammates. And after all that, goes to the Indians. Ziegler inbounds to McCullough.
Indians patiently looking to break this press. They do. They're in the corner, and that was an errant pass. Cameron Mills checks in. Give Gavin Cody a break. Thirteen nine, Mustangs. Two twenty two left in the quarter. Mustangs looking a little bit more deliberate this time down the court. Very nice drive by Keandre DeShields. Ziegler had nice position, nice defense, moved his feet well, forced him into a pretty tough shot. And there's Evan Buell for the nice uh, corner two, corner jumper. Gallagher goes up and is fouled. He'll get two shots. 15-11 Mustangs. 145 to go in the first quarter. First one goes off the front of the rim, no good. Patty McDonald in. Gallagher second, does not go in. Puel clears the board, up comes McDonald. Dunbar gets it stripped, but back to Pat. And Mustangs. Gallagher across half court. Over to Shields. Back to Davis. Those are the three leading scorers from last night. Pull up. Off the back of the rim. I'm not sure what that call is. In any event, it's Mustang's ball with Gallagher to trigger in. Here comes, I think the Indians got away with a reach in there. Pull up, and that's a, that's a really nice shot. Indians. Now the Mustangs can turn up this tempo when they want to. And it's almost like if they want to, and that's an errant pass. Actually a good foul by McCullough. Team fourth, side out. Ref steps in, keep the tempers down, which is a good move, I think. Now they're all gonna have a little talk. Now the second game here, there's a lot of intensity. This game has had a lot of build up, and I think uh, players obviously all feel it. So now, nice has been made and we can go back to playing basketball.
And Brula draws a charge on Keandre DeShields. He did go in there strong. Pat McDonald in for Ziegler. Pollock gets across half court and gets trapped. Fortunately, and then another turnover. For whatever reason, he throws it right to Brula. All the way across court to McCosco. The three is up, and it's good! McCosco's three cuts the lead to 18-14, and that three does not go. So it's the end of the first quarter. Laurel Highlands 18, Peters Township 14. A nice fast pace, fairly well played first quarter. Both teams coming off their first game last night. Laurel Highland Mustangs played at Baldwin and had a fairly easy time of it. They won 72-56. Keandre DeShields was the leading scorer in the game and paced the Mustangs with 27 points. Davis, Brandon Davis followed him with 20 and Rodney Gallagher also followed him up with 16 points. So their big three, 27, 20 and 16. That's 63 of their 72 points last night in their win over Baldwin. As for Peters Township, they got off to a good start last night with a 71-32 win over Albert Gallatin. It was really very close in the first quarter and then quarters two, three, and four, Peters Township just ran away. McCullough, Brandon McCullough was the leading scorer with 17. Gavin Cody followed up with 14. As I mentioned earlier in the broadcast, Gavin was shut out in the first half, but he followed up strong with 14 second half points. And Jake McCosco with 12. So Mustangs inbound the ball to Gallagher to start the second quarter. Really nice floater by Davis. That gives him double, double figures just into the second quarter. And that's a 10 count. Very impressive defense by the Mustangs. Needless to say, you have to have a little more uh, a little more want and drive to get it across half court. Free turnover by the Indians. Here's a slam. Oop, slam. Nice play by DeShields. 22 14. The well, Mustangs are just building a wall at half court. I think the Indians need a timeout, and they do. That's six. Quick points to open up the second second quarter, and that opens up a 10-point lead for the Mustangs. The uh, that 2-2-1 press just drops right at half court, and, and as I said, just you know, from where I'm sitting, it just almost builds a wall across half court. And the Indians are at the beginning; they were having no problem breaking it. Now. Just, uh, they can't climb over the wall. It's just, they've turned the ball over. If you include uh, the end of the first quarter into the second quarter, just a number of times. 
so let's see if they've come to an answer. Coach Ehrman, after timeout, maybe he's been able to draw something up. Why would the Mustangs do anything different? Same defense. A little bit of different alignment. They got the ball to the middle. Cody for three, just off the back rim. Mustangs push. Davis. And uh, we're going to get Pat McDonald with a very much a touch foul. But that gives them six, and they'll inbound underneath. Indians could have used that three after they made that nice break. Nice pass underneath, easy layup. Nice pass by Keandre DeShields. Mustangs up 12. McCullough picks up his dribble. Cross court to Gavin. Debrula lays it in. Breaks the ice here in the second quarter. Costco had good defense until he, right at the end, he uh, reached in. If he, I think if he would have gone straight up, he would have been okay. And then DeShields was certainly strong enough to finish, get the ball up on the glass and kiss it down for the potential three-point play. And that puts the Mustangs up 13. 5.30 left in the half, or in the, yes, in the half. Cody drives in hard and gets fouled. He'll shoot two. Only the third team foul for Laurel Highlands. First one good. as well as the second. The Shields has that shot pretty much down. It's about a 17 footer off the wing there. Foul line extended. Oh man, a lot of bumping going in there. Didn't, Indians did not get the call. Another drive by DeShields. Mustang strong on the rebound. Out to Gallagher, and that's a nice floater. 33-18. Indians are definitely in the danger zone here. Out come the Mustangs. Gallagher lays it in. They can almost do no wrong. Cody comes up and gets really undercut. He'll shoot two. Hope every looks like everybody's okay. Foul on number four, Jaden Pratt, 6'3 senior. Makes them both, cuts the lead down to 15, 35, 20. Approaching the midpoint of the second quarter. The Indians uh, drop into a 2-3 zone and they extend it. Laura Highlands heads coach. 
Rich Hager takes a timeout. So I don't know what the coach saw there, whether it was a 2-3 zone he didn't like or something else. But frankly, it looks to me like everything is going their way with a 15-point lead midway through the second quarter. But take a quick second to talk about it. The Indians send out McCullough, Brula, Cody, Dunbar, and McCosco. Now the Indians drop into a 1-3-1 look. Mustangs move the ball pretty well. Long pass off the backboard, down come the Indians. McCullough gets smacked and gets it to go. I heard that smack from up here. Give the Indians credit trying to do something a little different and shake things up. Let's see if it works. One shot for McCullough. And Hakey would like to have that one back. 35-22. Here come the Mustangs. Indians drop into the 1-3-1 again. Two for Gallagher. Mustangs control the rebound and goes right to Brandon Davis for a three. His offensive rebounds are starting to add up. Brula, Dunbar goes in, makes a nice bank. Long three. Off the back of the rim. The shield, I'm sorry, Davis was feeling that one. Cody, almost as long off the front. Brula battles, loose ball, McCullough controls it. McCullough comes in, gets it stolen. Here comes Gallagher, off the back and he gets fouled. He comes up holding his arm, hopefully he's okay. Seems to be. He went in there pretty hard, sort of the Peters defender. 2.36 left in the half, 38-24. One dribbling up, and his problems at the free throw line continue. I am positive the way he's his follow through and stroke, he's a much better free throw shooter than that. And he gets that one to go. Back to a 15 point deficit for the Indians. Indians. And the Indians will take a 30 second timeout. 2.28 left in the half. It's a fairly nice crowd here for this afternoon game. And it's awfully nice to have a crowd compared to last year with nobody Nobody in the stands, this beautiful gym. It's only the second time a 
a game's been played to an open crowd. Last year they played the full schedule just in front of uh, family members. Mills will inbound the ball against the Mustang man-to-man -man into Brula. Cody, his three is up, just missed off the front. Mills hustles. Mustangs. Still in the 1-3-1. One, Gallagher thought about it. McCulloch controls it. Uh, close to a walk, but didn't get a call. There's Cody, he turns and lays it in. That's 13 for Cody. Oh, just a step late on that. Gallagher for three, and that's nothing but that. Unfortunately, here the last five minutes or so, the Indians seem to be trading threes for twos. Mills turns it over. Here comes Gallagher into the middle. He pulls it back. Pull up three from 15 feet, goes right into the and then McCullough ends up with it to Dunbar, and he can't get it to go. I don't have the stats, but I would venture to say that the uh, offensive glass has been the Mustangs' friend and the Indians' It's been a problem here in the first half. Number 33, Nico Johns makes his first free throw. That's his first point on the evening. And he makes a second. All right, 46 seconds left in the half. Mustangs drop back into a man. McCulloch comes across half court. Drives the middle of the lane. Throws up a shot. Missed the rim. And that was a very nice move by Brandon Davis. He hung there for a second and Took the contact, got it up off the glass, and in. We'll look to complete the three-point play. Missed it. Indians claim the rebound. Kick out, that three's in and out. And then we've got a foul. I think they're gonna get McCosco on that foul. That's his second. We'll shoot two. And he gets that roll. And 
Mustangs are getting some of the starters out for the end of the half here with a 21 point lead. Line point four seconds. Enough time to get a shot off. Gavler's up and good. Ziegler inbounds to McCullough. Across half court. And we've got a foul. And I think they're gonna get Gallagher trying to get around that screen, but they had one to give. It's only his first, so 3.8 seconds to get a shot off. Brula comes in and gets the roll. So that cuts the deficit to 20 points. Laurel Highlands 48, Peters Township 28. And we'll be back at the uh, beginning of the third quarter. And we're back for the second half. Peters Township, Laurel Highlands with uh, Peters Township Indians down to Laurel Highlands, 48 to 28. And um, really interesting scoring wise, Laurel Highlands, their big three. You've got uh, Keandre DeShields with 14, Rodney Gallagher with 13, and Brandon Davis with 17. Frankly, that's, that adds up to 44 of their 48 points. And the Indians are paced by Gavin Cody with 13. Right out of the bat, Indians turn it over. If the Indians are gonna chip into this lead, they've gotta cut down on their turnovers. So the Indians come in with a one, two, two zone press to see what they can do against the Mustangs. They, they break it and come across. Gallagher for three, and that's nothing but net. Well, here's this 2-2-1 press that have, has just decimated the Indians. There's a cross-court pass to Cody. Nice pass to Pat, and he finishes it. Nice interior passing by the Mustangs. Davis finishes it. Indians bring it across. Cody comes in all the way across to McCullough. And they'll set it up. Mustangs drop into a man. Cody's three is good! Gavin Cody! Leads back down to 20. And there's a three from Keandre DeShields. Just a very smooth shot. Indians break the press this time. Cody for three and it's good! Gavin Cody. At least in the last minute or two, they're not trading threes for twos, it's threes for threes. Nice block by the Indians, but it'll stay Mustangs. The Shields drives. Beautiful running kiss off the back. McCosco to Cody, he drives hard, pulls up, 
and hits the baseline jumper. And we got a whistle. And we're going to get a technical. I think they're going to get Cody for saying something that he might not have probably should have maybe not said. Gallagher makes his first. Well, the referee did want to probably step in and keep things under control right off the bat, but it is, uh, it is hard to see after the way the first half was played. The chirping was nonstop. Gallagher pulls up for a 17-footer and it's good. That gives him 20 points. Pat McDonald drives and gets fouled. Indians will inbound underneath. That's one foul apiece. Ill-advised pass underneath and here come the Mustangs. That's one of the first ones the Shields has missed. Indians looking to run a set and get a shot. McCosco. Pat with a nice uh, Nice move underneath, just couldn't get it to drop. And a little, uh, little defense shown there. That basket gives the Shields 21 points. Brula drives, and he can't get it to go. It'll stay Indians. Hockey change for the Indians. We got Dunbar, Mills, Cody, Puel, and Ziegler in. Cody to Puel, and he gets a nice uh, baseline jumper to go. 64-40. Gallagher in with the Floater didn't get it to go. Mills fights. And they call a quick jump ball there. Sure looked like Cameron Mills had that ball. I think that goes again under the uh, chapter of trying to keep this game under control. Gallagher with a nice crossover. Blows by everybody. Cody off the front, and here come the Mustangs. Beautiful drop pass. Right in for Brandon Davis. Actually gives him 21 points, so the three of the, the big three for the Mustangs, 21, 22, and 21 points. 63 of their 68 points. Cody dribbles into a double team. Ziggler gets fouled by Davis. 
That's his second. 2.13 left in the third quarter. Dunbar for three straight on, just off the left side. Mustangs control. The Shields pulls up, and again, bottom of the basket. 70 to 40, Laurel Highlands. 138 left in the third. Cody for three, and it's good, Gavin Cody. Davis thought about that long three. Now it looks like they're, well, looked like for a second they were gonna run some clock. Short. And DeShields with a strong rebound and up. They are just beating, beating the Indians on both ends of the glass. Mills makes a nice move to the baseline but gets caught from behind. They're gonna get a foul. The clock is running because of the 30, 29 point lead. Mills gets the inbound, and the lights go out here in Peters Township. Right. 18.4 left in the third quarter. That's about the only thing that slowed the uh, Mustangs down this afternoon. Here's the Indians are going to take a full timeout with 18.4 seconds. Try to come up with something. Gavin Cody at this point has 24 points. He's the second leading scorer on the evening behind Keandre DeShields who has 25. And then the other two from the Mustangs with 22 and 21. Gallagher and Davis, respectively. All, all three of the uh, high scorers for the Mustangs are juniors. So they uh, they bring back a pretty nice team from last year, and, it, and, and if everything holds holds together for next year, they're they're going to be in pretty good shape for this and next year. And they are picked to, uh, if not contend, win, win the 5A. Indians inbound. They put 20 seconds back on the clock. We got a tie up and we're gonna get a jump ball. And that'll be the end of the set, third quarter. Laurel Highlands 72, Peters Township 43. I think as I mentioned, with this group as a sophomores last year, Laurel Highlands had a, had a pretty good run. They, uh, last year's playoffs, they started out with a win over Shaler and then had a nice win over Penn Hills. Penn Hills had a pretty nice team in 5A. It was a seven point win, 48 to 41. And then in the semis, they ran into a, a tough Newcastle team and they lost 
and uh, if my memory serves me, Newcastle ended up uh, losing to the eventual winner, uh, Chartiers Valley. And um, you know, they were 9-0 and in the section, 14-4 and overall in the shortened, shortened COVID season. So at this point, with the Indians down 72-43, I guess you're going to be looking just for little victories. You know, can they play a, can they play a little two-minute game and see if they can cut the score from 29 points? to see what they can do. Just play two little two minute games. McCullough drives into Brula and just can't get it over the front of the rim. Mustangs have not taken their foot off the gas at this point. They continue to push. Gallagher, nice pass to Davis again. A lot of extra passes for DeShields to finish. 74-43 Mustangs. And now they drop into their man-to-man. -man. McCullough drives hard and gets the roll. Ends up on his backside. DeShields comes in hard, double clutches and scores. Yeah, at this point, the Mustangs are gonna challenge triple digits score-wise. McCullough pulls up for a, about a 13-footer in the lane and it goes. Gallagher can't get it to go. Here come the Indians. Up, Kicks it to McCosco for three, and it's off the front. Goes right to Cam, and he gets fouled on the way in. Good hustle play by Cameron Mills. Would have been nice if he could get that up, but he, uh, he got arm barred on the way in. Did well to at least get it up on the glass where he did. So he'll shoot two. Mills is a nice free throw shooter. Misses the first. And the second one's right down the bottom of the net. Mills brings it across half court. I'm sorry, uh, Davis. Guarded closely by McDonald. Defensive rebound by McCullough. He brings it the whole way and gets it slapped out of bounds. Indians ball. Costco for the three, a little short, rebound. McCullough's short. Gallagher walks it across half court. Step back, and that one's short. Indians control, McCullough with a two on one. He goes in by himself. And Brula Gets it uh, slapped out of his hand, but he's going to get fouled. And he'll shoot too. Five fourteen left in the game. First one's good. Cody and Dunbar in. Mills and McCullough out. Second one rattles in. Indians pick up full court. With David bringing it across full court. Pulls up. Doesn't get it to go. Snatched out of the air. Twice by DeShields. Goes up strong and finishes. 
Keandre DeShields is an impressive player. And that gives him 31 today with a chance to get to 32. That's four fouls on Patty McDonald. Not sure what the holdup is. The referee's over by the uh, scorer's table checking the book. Where we sit up high, it's sometimes hard to tell exactly what uh, what transpires. Well, that's what they're checking. Pat McDonald has five fouls, and so he'll get to have a seat. Brendan McCullough checks in. And to Shields, drops his free throw, giving him 32 points. And they call a travel on that. Giving the ball to the Mustangs. Brandon Davis brings it up. Not look like and was. A little shuffle before he made a actually a nice unselfish pass. Here come the Indians. McCosco up off the front, easily controlled by the Mustangs. Davis walks it up. Looking for the lob, couldn't get it to number four, Jaden Pratt. And Davis will have a seat. He leaves with 21 points. Cody. Off the front, McCosco battles, gets re rejected. Loose ball. Here come the Mustangs. Nice pass to Gallagher. Oh, he can't finish it. Indians clear to Cody. Mustangs. Number 11, Mason Bullish in for Rodney Gallagher. Basket by Jaden Pratt. McCullough gets it to go, driving hard into the heart of the defense. Just under two minutes left in the game. Laurel Highlands 81, Peters 52. A lot of confusion there. I thought the basket counted. It should have been an and one. Everybody's standing around. McCosco, the only uh, player.
player heads up enough to put the ball back in, in the basket. These referees talk about it. Um, I think they're gonna give McCosco the two points. Eighty-one fifty-four. And they'll get McCosco with the bump. That's McCosco's third to go with five points. Mills, Ziegler. And Nate Miller enter the game. And Malachi Wallace in for the Mustangs. Indians. Fifty seconds left in today's game. Dunbar dribbles. Long three. Comes up short. Dunbar retrieves it. Goes in hard. Gets blocked. Out to Ziggler, drives strong. Gets it up and almost, uh, almost off the backboard. He'll shoot two. Clock stops at 20.8 seconds. 81-54. Ziggler, the left-hander, gets the roll off the front of the rim. Brandon Cullen into the game. Ziggler in and out for the second one. And the Laurel Highland crowd goes wild as Malachi Wallace makes the basket. And there's a three. And that'll do it as they, as they mob their teammate, Wallace. But the Indians go down fairly hard, 83-58 here this, on this Saturday afternoon.